From surprise cameos you definitely missed, to sly sight gags, sneaky symbolism, and deliciously devious secret messages. If you actually caught any of these details without the help of the internet, give yourself a firm pat on the back. If not, do not worry, your boy is here for you. I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 insane TV details you never noticed. Number 10. The same actor delivered and removed Martin's chair 11 years ago apart. Frasier. Martin Crane's famously hideous recliner chair is as much a character in Frasier as any of its flesh and blood humans. A mainstay which was moved into Frasier's apartment in the pilot episode and took its leave in the series finale. If we split in hairs, it was actually Frasier's purpose-built replica of Martin's original chair which got moved out in the finale. But you get the idea. Yet there's an added secret significance to the chair acting as the show's thematic bookend. As the chair was both delivered and removed by the very same individual. A checkered shirt wearing man who was even played by the same actor, Clito Augusto, both times. Almost 11 years after appearing in the pilot, Augusto reprised his role, making him the only actor beyond the main cast members to be in both the pilot and the series finale. How impressive! Number 9. Jam's Japanese sign actually says North Korea. Parks and Recreation Jeremy Jam is among Parks and Rec's most hilarious supporting characters, and one of his defining traits is a superficial obsession with Asian culture, albeit without actually understanding much about it. The funniest payoff to this was totally missed by most fans. As in Season 6's episode, The Cones of Dunshire, Leslie and Chris visit Jam's house where he makes them an authentic Japanese breakfast of scrambled eggs. On the wall behind him is a canvas print in Japanese kanji, which the majority of viewers simply won't be able to understand, and therefore probably assume it spells out a wise and calming quote. But in actual fact, the sign translates to North Korea. Korea, brilliantly underlining just how disingenuous Jam's apparently encyclopedic knowledge of everything Asian actually is. Number 8. Tony Soprano's Ominous Sixth Finger – The Sopranos In most shows, this might seem like a few fans simply reaching for meaning. But HBO's The Sopranos is so detailed, dense, and thematically complex from its very first episode that there's no reason to doubt its real intent. In the pilot episode, there's an overhead shot of Tony lying in bed, where the bed sheet is arranged to give the impression that the mobster has a sixth finger. At first glance, this might seem like a mere coincidence, until you consider that in ancient culture, having six fingers on either hand possessed major significance. Six fingers on the right hand foreshadowing great fortune, while six on the left hand foretold imminent bad luck. The alignment of the sheet is just too perfect, and the show too meticulously constructed to accept this as happenstance, especially considering the many bad things that await Tony Soprano and his family over the years to come. Number 7. All the Secret HD Widescreen Gags my name is Earl. From the late 90s through to the early 2000s, the adoption of widescreen TVs surged throughout the world. And so, TV shows slowly began to start shooting in an HD 16x9 ratio, effectively future-proofing themselves for a time when everybody would be watching everything in widescreen. Though it was initially viewed by most audiences in 4x3, the entirety of My Name is Earl was filmed in 16x9, and the producers decided to have a little fun with this by hiding gags in the widescreen frame, which would have been cropped out by 4x3 TVs. In Season 1, this included labelling a beer bump HD draft, having Randy hold up a sign reading High Def Rocks, and displaying the sign Carl Hickey loves High Def. A few years later in Season 4, when considerably more viewers had HD TVs, a newspaper title was displayed which read, Losers with old televisions miss out on high definition jokes. Genius! You love to see it, if you can see it. Huh. Number 6. The first black woman in space cameos in one episode. Star Trek The Next Generation In Star Trek The Next Generation's Season 6 episode, Second Chances, a transporter operator by the name of Palmer makes a brief appearance, who, unbeknownst to the overwhelming majority of viewers, is played by someone very special indeed. Palmer was played by Dr. Mae Jemison, who in 1992, the year before the episode was filmed, became the first black woman to travel into space aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavour, and was therefore the first real-life astronaut to 
appear on Star Trek. It's an especially poignant cameo as Jemison reportedly developed an interest in space after watching Nichelle Nichols' portrayal of Lieutenant Uhura on the original 60s Star Trek series, and during her time in actual space would start each day with the salute hailing frequencies open. LeVar Burton, who directed the episode, ended up inviting Jemison to appear and also had Nichols visit the set so the pair could meet. And just like that, a seemingly throwaway character becomes infinitely more interesting. Number 5. JD points at the ABC logo, Scrubs. Here's a detail you've almost certainly missed if you've only watched Scrubs in more recent years. Given that the gag's meaning is lost on anyone who didn't watch the show during its initial TV run, the season 8 premiere, My Jerks, saw Scrubs move from airing on NBC to ABC. And to mark the occasion, JD begins the episode by pointing at janitor's watch and proclaiming, huh, that's new. If JD's pointing seems rather awkward and unnatural, that's because he's actually pointing at the ABC logo, which would appear in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen on its original network broadcasts. And so, if you watch the episode in another country or view it today on Disney+, Plus, the gag just comes off as mildly confusing. Even if you saw the episode on ABC as it originally aired, though, it was still subtle enough to easily be missed. Number 4. The Animators Troll People Looking for Animated Nudity Clone High Cult classic animated series Clone High wrapped up its single-season original run with an outrageous blink-and-you'll-miss-it gag for the ages in its very final scene. When the group bursts in on JFK and Joan lying in bed, a panicked Joan quickly pulls the bedsheet up over her bare chest, and some inquisitive fans decided to freeze-frame this moment in the hope of catching some sneaky animated nudity. Hilariously though, the phrase nice try was instead emblazoned across Joan's chest. One word on each breast, in fact. In turn, playfully shaming those who couldn't resist trying to catch a peek of her in the buff. This is quite perfectly done, because the words are just barely visible enough in motion to make viewers think they've seen something sexual, basically inviting them to take a prolonged second look only to have their curiosity thoroughly mocked, you dirty rascals. Number 3. Legasoft Checks Behind the Door for One Disturbing Reason Chernobyl. Chernobyl is one of TV's greatest achievements in recent years, and it all comes down to how meticulously every on-screen detail was researched, even something as seemingly routine as a man opening a door. Near the end of the series after the trial has been completed, investigator Valery Legesov, brilliantly played by Jared Harris, is led to an interview room for debriefing, though as soon as he approaches the door, he immediately checks behind it. This isn't merely personal curiosity, but out of a very real real fear for his life. Given the KGB's well-known assassination technique of having a gunman hide behind the door and immediately shoot an enemy of the state dead the moment they cross the door's threshold. Though Legasov was spared in this moment, his life tragically ended with his suicide a short time later. Number 2. Holt has a gay pride flag in the pilot episode, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Brooklyn Nine-Nine is one of the most diverse and inclusive major sitcoms airing today, and its commitment to representation is felt no better than through Captain Raymond Holt, the black, openly gay police chief who proudly keeps a gay pride flag on his desk. Holt's sexuality is neither a point of mockery throughout the show, nor a secret of any kind, as Holt confirms to Jake he's gay at the end of the pilot episode. But this reveal is actually hidden in plain sight mere minutes into the episode, when Terry enters Holt's office and his gay pride flag can just be seen peeking out from a box in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Yet despite the flag's bright colors standing out against the boring beige wall, it's still incredibly easy to miss. But not anymore! Number 1. The O.J. Simpson murderer gag happened before the murder, Seinfeld. And finally, we have a gag that you've most likely understood at face value. But unless you saw the episode as it aired originally, you're missing the crucial context that makes it so damn insane. In Seinfeld's season 5 episode, The Masseuse, Elaine is dating a man named Joel Rifkin, sharing his name with the real-life serial killer of the same name, who was caught a few months before the episode was filmed. Elaine then starts brainstorming new first names for Joel, which couldn't possibly be linked to a murderer, and settles on OJ, insisting that he could just use the initials as a first name. To anyone watching today, this seems like a very intentional
occasional joke about O.J. Simpson. Until you realize that Simpson wasn't arrested for the double murder of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman for another six months. Those who didn't see the episode when it went out think it's a totally obvious topical joke about Simpson, when in actual fact it's a mere incredible coincidence that a seemingly offhand joke became a crazy detail in its own right. Fancy that. And that's our list. Know of any other insane TV details people never noticed? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon.